Coles Pass was considered in its day to be quite a serious road and contains three minor passes within its 21,6 km length, but with the excellent modern engineering methods having smoothed out the gradients and improved the banking and width, today the name of Coles Pass has fallen into disuse as officialdom no longer consider it worthy of being called a pass. In essence, the road connects the Hohook Pass in the east with Sir Lowry's Pass in the west and forms part of the N2 highway. The road traverses lovely mountainous scenery dotted with apple orchards, forests, dams and rivers, but this is a very busy road, so drivers will need to keep their eyes on the road. Like Sir Lowry's Pass, this pass was also named after Sir Galbraith Lowry Cole. He was Governor of the Cape Colony from 1828 to 1833. The setting at the eastern start of the pass is quite magnificent with the Hohook Mountains dominating the skyline to the north with the opposite side of the road being smothered in the forests and feinbos of the Lebanon Nature Reserve. In the middle of this wide valley, the N2 highway snakes its way westwards towards Cape Town. The popular Hohook farm stall is on the left hand side of the road which is a great place to stop for light refreshments and country fare whilst on the right hand side of the road a short road winds its way via a tight S-bend over the railway line and ends at the Hohook Inn which dates back to 1834. From the start the road climbs up over a small neck via a set of shallow cuttings to pass the Korthofen farm on the right. It then sweeps through a 90 degree left hand bend into the west southwest and straightens out into a long descent where the blue waters of the large Knoflocks Dam can be seen on the left. The wide expanse of mountain scenery to the right ends with the rugged Grunlandsberg range with the valley to the right known as Patrice Lachte. At the end of this descent the direction changes back into the northwest at the 5,8 km point via another easy right hand bend and soon the Fetrafir is crossed. Next follows a long steady climb at a gradient of 1 in 18 and the road widens into three lanes facilitating safe overtaking of slow moving trucks. As the road curves up the hill to the left, the large complex of buildings belonging to the Kromko fruit packers makes its appearance on the right. There is also a railway junction here which is similarly known as Patrice Once the top of this climb is reached, the road levels off for the next three kilometers as it descends gently down towards the Hrabo Elgin area through some tall stands of blue gums. At the bottom of this section there is a dangerous staggered intersection. Both of these roads, perhaps 200 meters apart, that join the N2 in the form of T-junctions are only guarded by stop signs. The nature of these roads is that they are mainly used by slow moving farm vehicles and it is this big speed variance which causes all the problems. This intersection has been the scene of some horrific and fatal accidents in the past and it's common to see a traffic control vehicle parked here monitoring the situation. To add to the mix, the very popular Peregrine farm stall is also accessed immediately after the second intersection, so be aware of vehicles making sudden and irrational changes in both speed and direction and expand your following distance. The road now changes direction into the west and descends into the Hrabo Valley via an easy S-bend. In the distance to the left, a concrete tower and other structures can be seen fairly high up in the mountains and well above the road level. This is the Palmit River Dam, which is a fairly recent and highly successful irrigation project. After crossing the Palmit River, the road climbs steadily through a wide left-hand curve and at the 15 km point there is another dangerous intersection, which is the main road heading to Hrabo. Beware of vehicles crossing from right to left at slow speeds and take note of the speed restriction here, which is 80 km per hour. The road then climbs steeply and steadily, reaching its steepest gradient at 1 in 11 here as it curves back into the northwest via a tighter right hand curve. At the 18,7 km mark, the summit of 442 meters is reached and the road then descends steadily towards the Stienbras River. Here you'll get a good view of the upper Stienbras Dam. When the dam is 100% full, it extends under the N2 and up the valley on the right. It should be noted that this section of the N2 is controlled by average speed monitoring per camera. Ahead is the big rugged mountain range called the Hottentots Hollands Mountains which stretch in a wide arc forming the basin of the Cape Peninsula. Now prepare yourself for a steep short climb to the next summit which is the starting point of Sir Lowry's Pass. Mm -hmm.